Hey guys, Dr. RV back again to talk to you about something near and dear to my heart and everybody else's when it's hot outside. And that's RV air conditioning, comfort and maintenance. So what we're going to talk about is how to maintain your, your air conditioner, how to make it work for you in the best way, and, and how to make it work in general and what can go wrong. So let's start with the panel. Come on over here, Michael. First thing is, is the panel is, is getting it on, getting it to turn on, getting it to start. So, what do you need first? You need power, right? So either plug in or on the generator. A couple of rules there. If you're plugged in, that's that's pretty cut and dry. You're going to have power coming straight to the RV. If you got the generator on, you want to make sure and run the generator. Make sure the microwave comes on. That, that'll tell you that you've got power to the RV. Then you can start turning your air conditioner on. One other thing that's real important, when you go to turn it off, if you are running on the generator, make sure you shut the AC thermostat off first. Don't just shut the uh, generator down with the AC running. It's very bad for the AC. It's very, very bad for the generator, stator, and rotor, uh, and it can cause some problems down the road long term. So we have power. We're already plugged in, ready to go here. So we're going to start with a panel. It's pretty simple. Everybody's got a thermostat in their house. you got a thermostat in your RV. Same thing. You've got a few settings here. You've got fan high and low, auto high and low, heat, off, fan, and cool. Now, you're not going to use fan very much unless you just like the sound of a fan or you want it blowing all the time. I would use it on auto. It's just a little bit more efficient uh, and, unless you want to do otherwise. So here we're going to turn on auto high and then cool. And then we need to set our setting. Now, this is important as well. A lot of us in our homes like to keep it at 67, 68 degrees. We like it nice and cold and frosty in the house. Well, in an RV, that can, all, that can cause a lot of problems down the road. So what we want to do is keep it 71, 72, 73. It's a very small RV, uh, a, a one system unit. It's, it's really more than enough to keep the RV cool. And I think you'll be satisfied with that degrees. So we've got our system turned on. So we're going to go ahead and float the switch on down. It comes right on. So we're going to walk over here check out the unit. Now you notice it's all blowing right here. It's all blowing straight down. That's not what we want. This is a ducted system. As you can see there's a duct here, duct here. There's several throughout the coach and what that does is it allows it to uh, to distribute. So I want to close these up. Now once we close that up what that does is it pushes the air through the ducting system throughout the RV so everybody gets an equal amount of air. It doesn't just blow down right here. So always make sure you do do that. A couple of other tips we're going to go through. As you can see in the RV over here, we've got the shades down. Okay, We've got all the shades down on all the windows. Michael, if you'll give them a shot of that cover on the front. Whatever your RV may have, it's Class C. It's going to have a cover similar to this to cover the windshield. Uh, if you're in a Class A or a diesel pusher, uh, it's going to be a, a screen or anything on the front. What that does is the windshield brings in the most light in the whole coach. So you want to cover that first and foremost. Uh, obviously when you're still, don't cover the windshield when you're driving. That causes a lot of trouble. But the windows, if you're in Arizona and it's 110 degrees outside, that's about as hot as it gets. You're not going to get much better than 20 degrees less than what's outside. So you want to shut all the windows closed. If you have day night shades, make sure and put down the night shades so you're blocking as much light as possible. Same with the bedroom and throughout the coach. The reason you shut those down is to keep out any sun or any light that you can. Um, like I said, 20 degrees. So you may be in the desert at 88 degrees if you're dry camping or if you're plugged in even. So be mindful of that. That'll help you. Now, if you ever encounter a problem where you're blowing hot air, it should never blow hot air. It can be hot in the coach and still be blowing cold air because of the outside temperatures. However, if it's blowing hot air, you want to maybe open one of these up so you get it all right here. You get a good feel for it and it's hot or it's warm. I like to use a laser temperature guider to see what kind of temperature I'm getting in there or even just put a thermometer in there and it'll tell you what it's at. If you are not getting a good solid 40, 50 degrees coming out at the source, then you have a problem. If it's blowing hot air, you have an issue. Now, it can be a fixable issue. Many times when it's very, very humid outside, the, the, the uh, humidified air can actually cause the AC unit to freeze up. This is actually another problem of keeping at a low temperature. If you've got it on 65 and it's just humming along and it's really humid outside, odds are you are going to freeze up what's called the coils. The coils are going to be frozen over and it will not produce cold air. It can't because it can't cool the air around it. So how do we solve that without breaking the thing apart? No problem. That's when you're going to use fan. 
turn it off of auto, turn it off of cool, turn it on fan high, the heat outside will start, it will start sucking in some of the heat outside and it will blow through. Yes, it's going to be blowing hot air, but it is going over the frozen coils, so it won't be real hot. Now, it's going to get warm inside the RV while it's doing that. It takes about an hour up to three hours, depending upon the temperatures outside and how long you or, or how fast it's running. That, at that point, uh, will melt down that ice. Once it does that, you can turn the AC back on and start over again. Uh, this is one problem you can solve by yourself. Uh, this can also occur if you have low power. Just because you're plugged in at a very nice resort or park doesn't mean you're getting a full 30 or if in a class A, 50 amps. You can get 20 amps, 18 amps. You can get less if you are on a line with 20 other people and everybody's running their AC in the heat, you can definitely get less amps. If you do that, the AC pulls the most amps in the coach. It pulls between 13 and 15 upon the start and between 10 and 13, depending upon how old it is and, and how hard it's running. Uh, if you have your microwave and your TV and anything else that's running on 110, something plugged in, if you're running your water heater on electric, these all pull amps away from the RV. When it does, it can also cause it to freeze up. If those two things aren't the problem, you've got another issue. You should probably bring it to me and I'll do surgery on it. So, what else can go wrong? A relay. If we shut this off and turn it right back on, it's not going to do very well. It's probably not going to come on. It's not broken. It's not hurting. It's got a relay in it. What that relay does is it tells it to shut down and stay shut down for anywhere from 20 seconds to two minutes. So if you accidentally cut it off and you try to turn it right back on and it doesn't come on and you're clicking and clicking, leave it alone, let it rest for a couple of minutes, then you can click it back on. Most likely it'll turn on. That relay is built in there for that reason to take care of it. So how else can you maintain your, your AC without tearing the thing apart? It's actually pretty simple. We're going to shut it off. Okay. We're going to come over here. Now this is a Coleman. The Coleman's, uh, they have their own design with, with two clean out areas right here. Some of them have one in the center. Some of them just have one on one side. Some of them have them all over. It just depends on which one you have. On this Coleman, it's on the left and the right. You can pull this off. The first thing you want to look at is this. Now, this is a pretty nice filter. Uh, they all have filters. Some of them are just literally a piece of small cloth. Uh, some of them are hard plastic like this and, and are pretty durable. All you do is turn on the sink, run it under the sink, get this cleaned out. This should be done about every couple of days of use, maybe three or four days if you want to go that long. It's just like a, a filter at home except much, much thinner. So it is going to collect that dust. I don't know if you can see that. There is a small layer of dust on there. Um, just run it under the water, wash it up real good, and put it back up. That's easy enough. That should be done on a regular basis. Now, you've owned your RV for two or three years. Uh, you've gone on three or four trips a year. You run that thing for weeks at a time. The coils are probably clogged. Um, and the reason this happens is because you don't have a good filtration system in these things. So it takes in a lot of dust if you don't keep this clean. The coils are going to be up inside here. On this particular model, they're actually on the inner side up right here and on the other side. You can access these from here. Depending upon the unit, whether it's Dometic or uh, Penguin, you may have to do it from the top. If that's too much of a work for you, then you can have somebody do it for you. It's a pretty easy procedure. Uh, you can get a cloth and clean them. Be very careful. When you're looking for the coils, what you're looking for is what's on the back side of your refrigerator. We've all seen the back side of a refrigerator. We've all taken our finger and bent the little fins. The same thing. Don't bend these fins. But that's what these are. It's just coils. Clean them off with a nice wet towel. What's even better is coil cleaner. It's a foaming cleanser you can get at any hardware store. Spray it on there, leave it on for a couple minutes, wipe off the excess, it'll get it clean. If you can do this once a year, that's great. Your AC will run efficiently, you won't have any problems, and you'll stay nice and cool. So that's about it that we got for uh, RV air conditioning, comfort, and maintenance. Like I said, this is a very important thing. We never want to be stuck out in 80, 90, 100 degree weather without an AC. Kids are complaining. These things can help you do that. If you're on the road, you're experiencing some of those problems, go back through the video. It'll show you how to do it. In the meantime, always look out for the doctor. He's always in. Like us on Instagram and Facebook and check out our posts. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. Remember guys, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more helpful videos if you like what you see. We'll be taking in new patients every week. 
till you get the medicine you need for your RV needs.